We live in an era that for many, integrity is not important. Agree with me? Or purity. It's just not important. It's not something that the young people are pursuing. No integrity. No purity. But at one point, we must remember that our God is a holy God. And that He is looking that we develop His character in us. The Bible says, who can enter in His presence? The one with pure heart and clean hands. I don't know about you, but it's all about the presence of God. Agree with me? It's all about the presence of God. The Bible says, who can enter in His presence? The one with pure heart and clean hands. Nowadays, people pay so much attention to the outward appearance. But look what the Bible or what the Word of God says in 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, For the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at their heart. People look at the outward appearance. People out there, and some of the people here, are more concerned about what is going on in the outside. But for God, what is going on in the inside is the main thing. Look, let me be honest. Can I be honest with you? Okay. We all made mistakes. There is no one perfect among us. Only Him is perfect. Amen? We all made mistakes. But in one point, listen, listen, we all made mistakes. But in one point, we must learn from our mistakes. And we must allow God to start the process to change us. My friend, there's a point in our lives that it's time to change. You hear me? It's time to change. I want you to see this video. You're going to laugh. Years and years ago, I showed this video. But I thought it was a perfect video for what I'm about to teach you today. So, turn off the lights. You got the video ready? Let's see the video. That's a pickle. <laughs> oh, milk. <laughs> yeah. Mm. August. Mm. That doesn't seem right. Does a body good?
in one point we should learn. And I know we laugh about this and we say, come on, who would do that? And when you start to think about it, some of us, we're doing this just in another area of our lives. My friends, at one point, we must allow God to take control of our hearts. I got another example of talking about refrigerators. I remember, you know, going to my house and one day... I opened the refrigerator looking for food, and it hit me like, wow, the smell wasn't strong. You see, what happened is we go to other restaurants, and always we got the leftovers, and we bring them, and we place them over there, or we're going to eat it. But we never eat it. But something we got leftovers of weeks in there. And something when you open the thing, some of you guys say, oh, no, but you are the same like me sometimes. <laughs> unless, unless you are a bambelen. I'm just kidding. For those that remember Leo Van Bellen, okay? <laughs> But you open the thing and it smells so bad. And the truth is that you and me, when sometimes the refrigerators smell bad, what do we do? We go and buy this yellow box. How do you call that thing? Yes. And we put it over there because that thing is going to take the bad smell, bad odor. The truth is, we got to clean the refrigerator. Right? Well, my friends, some of us, we need to clean their, listen, the inside of our heart too. You know, in order to clean the refrigerator, if I'm saying it right, kind of, you have to take everything out, then clean the thing, remove the stink, then you can place back the food inside. We must fix what is wrong in the inside. If not, sooner or later, it's going to create another bigger problem. Am I right? Let me give you an example. How does this relate to us? If someone comes to you and tells you, something is wrong with you, brother. You have a nasty attitude. Have you ever heard of that? Okay, somebody comes to you and says, what's wrong? Why you explode? Like, oh, why are you like that? If that happens, you should pray and do something about it. But you see, what do we do? We made the excuse right away. Oh, I was abused when I was little. That's why I am the way I am. And maybe it's true. But at one point, listen, you must change. Most of the time when humans are confronted... What we, usually, what we usually do is that we, made, we make excuses of justification and say, well, my husband, my husband, my wife doesn't treat me right right now. or well, she's not speaking to me. I'm going through difficult times. Leave me alone. That's why I am the way I am. My boss, you know, you don't understand. I am the way I am right now because my boss, you don't understand the way he's treating me right now. That's what I'm in bad mood all the time. Stop making excuses and fix the problem. <laughs> Stop making excuses and fix the problem. It's not normal. Cricket, cricket. Did I got your attention? No, I don't got your attention. You're busy in the phone right now. Did I got your attention? Look at me. You need to know that at one point, you must fix the problem. You must fix the problem. What do we need to do? We need to ask God, why am I always reacting like that? Have you noticed that sometimes you are mad and you don't even know why you're mad? Somebody's honest, like, Pastor, you're describing me right now. But the other ones, the other ones, they look at me like right now. <laughs> You're not talking about me. Look at me. Look at me. The face. Look at the face. Look at the face. This is my face. You're not talking about me right now. Leave the phone. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Are you with me? <clears throat> no. Yes. You gotta fix the situation. What we have to do is to seek the root of the problem. We have to seek the root of the problem. Have you ever been in a situation that something smells really bad? 
Huh? And you're like, Joe, we live in Brooklyn. What's up? In the Bronx, Harlem. I mean, we're in Coney Island. Hello. Hello, Pastor Tony. Let me give you the story that has become very famous. I'm even writing part of one of the little books that I do. This story is becoming really famous. It's the story of Pancho. Pancho is my dog. And let me, let me, let me, let me, let me explain something that happens. Usually, when something goes wrong, you see, Pancho is a dog that lives inside the house. So we got to be very careful to take him out all the time. Because if we don't take Pancho, guess what's happening? Pancho is not going to wait for us. Pancho is going to do his thing. How many know what I'm talking about? It's an English, it's a French bulldog. And Pancho, when it's time to go, if we're not there, he's going to go. So, this is a story that happened one day. And you know, when, when something that happened, right away, we, as we clean the thing, Pastor Gladys gets a candle. And she always, you know, use the match and the candle like, whoo, this is no bad, you know. She's trying to fix the situation. So one day, we went out all day, and we forgot about Pancho. So for the time we came in, you know, Pancho did his thing. So, but the problem is, we were walking in with guests to the house. Important guests. So, we're walking in, we got the guests, important people, you know, people like you, huh, huh, coming to my house. And then at that moment, as I opened the house, Pancho little room is right there next to the entrance. So the thing when you open, like, whoo, baby, it was like a hit. In that moment, guess what Pastor Gladys did? Would you like to know what she did? Okay, I got it over here. Pastor Gladys ran, and she went like. <laughs> she went to all over the place. She was going to all over the place, all over the place. Even to Jonathan, shh, all right? She was like, shh. She was, she was using the spray to spray everywhere. Can I, can I ask a question? Did that fix the problem? No! Now the house was smelling like poop with spray. Like perfumated poop. Now it was worse. The smell was strong, but with perfume. How many know what I'm talking about? Have you done it? Have you done it? <laughs> yes, you have done it. So, she runs and lights some candles. And the people were like, Ooh, what's the smell? And we're in Brooklyn, we're in Brooklyn, we're in Brooklyn, we're in Brooklyn. <laughs> the smell was so nasty. What do we have to do? What was the thing that we needed to, have to, to happen? It was not getting well, so Pastor Gladys was continuing like, she was praying the whole thing. Now can I say something? It was worse and worse. The problem was not fixed until we sent Jonathan to clean the mess. Oh, it's his dog. It's his dog. It's his dog. So I said, go fix the thing. So until he took the thing, are you with me? But because he was little, he only cleaned his understanding. The problem was not fixed. You see, the guests left the house. They left thinking that our house will stink forever, right? It was when Pastor Gladys went over there and used different liquids, are you with me, to remove the smell that the room went back to its normal. The problem needed to be fixed. Properly. My friends, coming to church and doing this is not going to change the problem. I mean, Pancho is a cute dog, my friends. Such a cute dog. But it smells. But he does his things. 
Now there is a lot of Christian cute people out there. But their attitudes is thing worse than the Pancho stuff. You hear me just what I said? They're cute Christians. Oh, they're looking good when they come to church and they raise their hand and mm -mm, oh, 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 shalaka, laka, oh, oh, whatever you got going on in the inside. But the bad attitudes come and everybody can see that. Have you ever seen a bad attitude Christian out there? And one point that has to change. We're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But if you're the same person that 10 years ago, and you knew Jesus 10 years ago, you're still the same person, something is wrong. Bipolar. No, 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 no. You need to change. You need to allow the work of the Holy Spirit to start changing us. Do you know what bad attitude means? Would you like to know that? Okay, three people. Would you like to know that? Yes. Say yes or no. Yes. A bad attitude means to make others pay the price for what others did to you. Can I repeat again? A bad attitude means to make others pay the price. Others pay the price for your bad attitude. For what others did to you. Stop praying. God changed my circumstances and I start praying, God change me. Change me. You're going to give a hand up to God. Come on, praise him right now. Yes, change me first. So many things are getting motion because of bad behavior. And then later we feel sorry and we want to change about it. It's not that we are compassionate. It's that we know that we made a mistake. And now we want to fix it. How do we change, Pastor Tony? Number one, you need to stop hitting yourself for what you do wrong. Stop hitting yourself. It's better to read and observe the word of God so you can know how you were supposed to change according to God. Stop beating yourself. I'm never going to change. I am the way I am. No, no, no. Read the word of God and say, little by little, I'm a new creation through Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in me, I can domain, control my emotions in the name of Jesus. Amen? Little by little. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, we have somebody just to forgive us. And he's interceding for us. In heavenly places. In other words, he knows what we go through. And he's praying to the Father. I know they deserve judgment, God. I know Tony and Gladys, they have done so wrong. But God, don't see them for who they are. See them through my sacrifice. And then God says, I cannot judge them. I can only love them because of the sacrifice. And I'm going to give them a chance to keep on changing. Oh, you better give a hand clap to God. Keep on changing. Don't let the enemy come and bring condemnation. Oh, I'm not good. I, I'm not, I, I, I cannot change. I'm always the same. It's stop. You know what? I'm the same. No, stop. Talk to the enemy. Say, stop. I'm changing little by little. I don't want to be this person. But don't listen to the enemy lies. So, how can I change? Well, first thing, in a practical way speaking, first seek what stinks. Seek what stinks. What really smells wrong in your life. What are you talking about? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about spiritual speaking. Can anybody right now, right now, do a little self-test? Everyone here, think of something in you that you know is not good. Anybody? Anybody? Something in you that you know is not right, supposed to change it. And everybody thought about it right now? You can raise your hand if you th thought on something. Yes? Okay? Pastor Simon, you raised your hand. I'm amazed. Can you say something? Say it loud so they all learn. Any area that you think you need to change in you? You need to be more kind. Yeah. Actually, he's very kind, but he needs to be more kind. That's right. But, uh, Wanda? The what? Oh. 
All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. All right, all right, all right. Anybody else? Although we're in the back. Yes. My sister over there. Yes. Well, that's somebody. Thank you. Not the other one. Your temper. You have a bad one. All right. How many of you need to change your temper to? So find what is wrong. This is wrong. And at one point, you got to say, this got to change. Sit with his things. Second, decide to change. Decide to change. You hear me? Decide to change. But remember, as you're trying to change, the only one that can change you is the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the only one. It's the only one that can change you. So come in contact with the power of the Holy Spirit. Seek the presence of God. Have, number three, your private meeting with God every day. And instead of, listen, instead of coming to God and say, God, prosper me. God, make me all powerful. God, hallelujah. God, woo. You know what? Say, God, I don't want to be the person that explodes the way I explode. Change me, God. Instead of seeking verses and verses of prosperity, look for verses that what happened with people that couldn't control their temperament. And it's going to inspire you to change. My friend, that will be a good beginning. That will be a good beginning to start changing. There's a story that is going to help us to understand more what I've been teaching you. I no time to go to the verses. But this person in the story is going to teach us that if we don't take care of something that is, it may look small, when it's time to fix it, later can become an avalanche of problems in our lives. I'm talking about the great Samson. The great man that was consecrated from birth. God said to his mother, out of you is coming a man that I'm going to use to deliver my people. The great Samson. He was unique in many ways. God said, never cut his hair. But this is something that nobody should know. With it, it came a great gift. He was strong beyond understanding he was powerful and there was a moment when God showed his power through this man called Samson and he destroyed many but the Bible says also that he had a little problem he had a little problem that he never took care you want to know what was a little problem the skirts what do you mean? He like women that not fear God. He could have shoot someone, all these women that fear God. Like some of you Christians, you can shoot about all these women or all among these men. He said, they're not cute enough. Well, travel with me to another country so we can find you one cute. In the house of God. But if you don't... You don't listen basic stuff. Are you with me? And then you, like Samson, get involved with somebody who don't fear God. Don't come later say, Pastor, somebody broke my heart. I said, so, why are you coming now? You never heard me. You never heard me. You never hear me. So, Samson got a little problem. He liked the woman that... Got no fear from God. So he ended up giving his heart to this woman and telling the secret. And you know, she was bought by the enemies. And obviously, she was a daughter of the enemies. And guess what happened? She told the other ones that were trying to destroy Samson what was the secret. And they cut his hair. And they took, listen, they took his gift in a moment. 
the wrong person in the wrong time, listen to me, is going to take, it has a, the, the capability to take your gift, my friends. Young people, are you listening to what I'm saying right now? This is a good teaching right now. Be careful. You see, something little end up with a big, big problem. They slave him. When he was asleep, they cut his hair. Later, they took his eyes. When you end up with the wrong person, you're going to lose your vision for life. Say it wow, because it is wow. Wow, wow, wow. But it means nothing if you don't do nothing about it. You got to understand that the wrong person, the wrong time, is going to distract your vision. No vision, no more. He lost the vision, but thank God that right there, he repent. Come on, we all can repent in the name of Jesus. We all can repent in the name of Jesus. Somebody came to church today. Amen. We all can repent in the name of Jesus. He said, Pastor Tony, I don't like you, but I like what you teach. And I don't care if you like me or not. I want to make sure that you learn today. Are you with me? And what I said today is, be careful. Because listen, everything is out there trying to take your gift. Trying to take your anointing. Trying to take your call from you. Fix the problems now before it's too late. Fix the problem now. So, he cried out to God and God have mercy. Not of Samson, to be honest. Have mercy of his people. And he completed the task. But it was sad that in the process, he killed himself. He what? Killed himself. Look at what the Bible says in the Song of Solomon 2.15. The wiser man in earth says this. Can I, can, I give you, can I give you a tip? A wise counsel? Not for me, but for the wiser man in the Bible. Can you take counsel today? Say yes or no. You know what the wiser man, the richer man in earth said? He said this. You better catch. The Lord catch for us the foxes. The little foxes, they ruin the bean yards. Are bingers that are in bloom. In other words, if we don't catch, see in those days there are many vineyards, but the little foxes will come and eat the roots of the bingers. And no matter how beautiful they will look on the outside, they will end up destroying the whole thing. Are you with me? Little things, if you don't take care of them, Listen, you know what's going on, but you know what you do? That's what I said. God is more interested in what is going on in the inside than what is going on in the outside. Stop spray, spraying it. Your problems. Fix the problem. You hear me? Nobody knows you more than you than you. My mama know me. Oh, no. Nobody knows you more than you. You better catch those foxes now. In the name of Jesus. Amen? Before the beautiful binger becomes messed up. We must identify the problem. We must identify the foxes. That would end up ruining the whole thing. Your life, your family are in danger if you don't fix this. You need a profound change. You cannot keep spraying it. You need to take care of the problem. Talking about us living in, 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 in Brooklyn. This happened to me. I used to live in an apartment. And the apartments were next to each other. So, sometimes people were not careful living next to us. Listen, listen, listen. And sometimes, how many know that mice or rats go between the walls? Yes or no? Did anybody have an experience that a rat or a mice die between the walls? And you are looking all over the place 
Where is the problem? Where is the messed up? Have you ever? Yeah? Look at it. You cannot find it. But when you pass through there, ooh, this is thing. And it was not Jonathan. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm hammering you, boy. Are you with me? It's like, where is the smell? I was new in New York City. I was like, what is this? Somebody said, you have a rat or mice dead between the walls. So what can I do? One, break the wall, or just wait until the thing dry. I was not the owner of the thing. No, this is serious. How many of you have went through something like this? Raise your hand. Look at that. Somebody went like, Ugh, get used to it. Welcome to New York City, okay? This is what happens. And there is nothing you can do about it. So we let the thing dry. And you know what we did? We continued doing this. So now the whole house was smelling dead rat with perfume. In one point, we got to let go, my friends, the spray. And let the word do the change. There's another story I got. I had a car that was a beautiful car. But where I was living, really... The water, it rains so hard that the water rises up so much. So one of those things that the water went through the whole thing. Are you with me? It went inside the car. I was traveling. For the time I come back, listen, listen, listen. The car dry out with the windows closed. The carpet of the car. For those that you know what can happen when you don't dry the carpet of a car properly, What's the smell? What's the smell of the car? So, I went to clean the car, and as I cleaned the car, I said, clean the car. And you know, they clean the outside, the rings, and everything looks so beautiful. But it's still, Benji, the smell was there in a miserable way. The smell was terrible. They vacuumed the car, but you know what I did? I could not handle it. So you know what I went? I went and buy a lot of these ones. Have you ever seen these things? To the point that the smell was so bad. Stay with me, stay with me. That every time I drove, I would put one in my nose right there. I was driving. It was the only way to control the smell. It was terrible. I'm telling you. I was driving and like, whoo! That was the only way to control the smell. You say, Pastor, for real? I'm saying it for real. You cannot make these stories. It was nasty, the smell. You know what I'm talking about when you have water and you don't fix it? So, this is what I did. I did my best. And then I went to a mechanic and he says, Whoa, this is bad. And I said, yeah, hello. He said, you got to clean this thing properly. How do you do it? You got to clean the whole thing. Remove the seeds. And I said, how much are you going to charge me? I'm going to do it for this. I say, go ahead and do it. So he removed the whole thing. And after that, finally. But you see, you got to take care of the problem from the root. You cannot just take care from the outside. I'm going to talk to you right now. As the piano and the musicians start to come. And I'm going to finish with this story. Because it's another story about a man of God. That we all admire very much. This man of God. He was considered one of the greatest leaders in this earth. But stay with me because this man of God is going to give us a lesson for life. This man of God was called by God to lead the people from slavery into deliverance. I'm talking about the great Moses. The Bible says that God was with Moses and that Moses talked to God in a way that nobody did. But for whatever reason, we're going to observe something that was not taken care of by Moses. The Bible says that one day the people was like saying, hey Moses, we want water. And they gathered together and shout, we want water, we want water, we want. And Pastor Moses had it. He said, I got it. Say, God, what about these people? They say, hey, Moses, get the staff that I give you. Hit the rock, and you're going to have water. So he did it. He was mad. But anyways, he hit the rock, 
and anger, and guess what? Water came, right? Representing the rock of Christ. And water came, and the people got blessed. And Moses said, well, what a great miracle, and he forgot about it. But it happened again. The, later, again, the people start to reveal. We want water again. We want water, 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 water. And Moses was having a bad day. He said, God, tell these people, I cannot stand no more. Pastor Moses was having a bad day. They cannot fix the sound. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Moses was having a bad moment. So, Moses said, God, say, Moses, speak to the rock. Yeah, I got it, God. So he got the staff, he now pay attention, and he hit the rock. You with me? He hit the rock. In that moment, water came out. The people drink. It was a great blessing. But in the night, when Moses, stay with me. Stay with me. I know I cannot compete against handsome young man. Stay with me. Stay with me. God called Moses and Moses. You, I, I imagine the voice of God like this. Moses. Moses. I said, yeah, Lord. Moses, why do you hate the rock? And Moses said, what do you mean? Moses, I told you to speak to the rock. And you in anger, you hit the rock. It's a big revelation about how the second time represents Jesus but resurrected. He was not supposed to hear it but to speak. And Moses said, God, oops. And God said, Moses, because you hit the rock. Translation, with a bad temper with a nasty attitude in front of my people translation Tony Lara pretty much what it says you will not enter the promised land something that I cannot digest after 30 years of preaching the word of God one mistake it caused this man to enter the promised land why? because God is not playing about us changing in one point especially if we leaders and servants of God Moses could not play the excuse I'm sorry I was having a bad day no 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 not a bad day in one point you gotta change and the Bible says that the great Moses can I say something that breaks my heart are you ready to listen the Bible says, no, you're not ready to listen. Are you ready to listen? The Bible says that Moses was able to see only from far away the promised land. Many Christians are only seeing from far away their promise and never make it to it because they don't want to change areas in their lives. Don't see from far away your destiny. Change. Change. Allow the power of the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart, humble yourself, and change. The change is for nobody, it's for you. So you can reach the promise that has been given to you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? About seeing from far away the blessing and never get the blessing. Get the blessing. Amen. You want to get the blessing? How many want to get the blessing? Stand up on your feet, everybody. Stand up. Turn up the lights right now. You know what's the area you need to change. Close your eyes right there. Pray to Him right now. Pray to Him right now. Say, dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You know exactly where I need to change. 